We'll start with Meredith Morakovitz from Yes Network. Meredith, go ahead. Hey, Matt, thanks for taking the time. I know it's been a little bit of an or unorthodox situation. Can you just go through exactly how you landed with the Yankees? Uh, yeah, I think the Friday before uh, rosters were supposed to be finalized, I got a call from uh, Chris Woodward with the Rangers, and he just said that um, they weren't planning on bringing me along for the 60-man roster for spring training 2.0. Um, I'm sure there was a lot of discussion that went into it. The way I understood it is they thought they had coverage uh, with some of the younger guys that they had. And then I called my agent. An hour later, we got a call back from, uh, from the Yankees, and here I am. It was a wild couple hours for sure. What was your initial reaction when you found out the Yankees were interested? Um, I knew that there was interest there from the off season. Um, I hoped that it would still still be there. Uh, that, you know, it doesn't always work out that way. Uh, fortunately, um, you know, it was a very up and down couple hours. Uh, obviously, to get a call saying that you're not coming to spring training is not ideal. Um, you know, you start wondering where you're going to be for the off season, where you're, what you're going to do in the meantime, if you're going to stay wherever, work out, go home. Um, so to to get the interest from the Yankees that was that was there in the off season and still be there, um, extremely thankful, just elated, really. What are your expectations, and how do you see yourself potentially fitting in? Um, I, I think expectation wise, I don't really have much. Um, obviously, I'm I'm thankful to be here. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, playing against the Yankees, I think that um, this group is capable of what, or they're, they understand what I'm capable of bringing to a team. Um, sorry, I just got done with a workout. Um, you know, I, I would like to be just a thorn in other teams' sides. That's what I try to do. Um, if I'm doing that, then I'm doing my job. Um, so that's kind of what, what I hope to bring to this team is uh, some, some stability maybe off the bench. We'll see. Um, and just somebody that uh, the staff can count on uh, when I'm in the game. Thanks, Matt. Take the next question from Sweeney Murdy. Sweeney, go ahead. Hey, Matt, can you just uh, give a little more detail on what kind of talks you had with the Yankees over the winter and why you ended up going where you went? And after that, is second base still uh, an option for you considering LeMahieu's absence and the, the need here right now? Um, you know, I think the discussions with the Yankees in the offseason were really it came down to kind of like a, a toss up between here and Texas. I felt like uh, my opportunity to more playing time was probably there with Texas. Um, that's ultimately why I ended up going there. Um, what was the second question? I'm sorry. Uh, just with uh, it's been a while since you you played some second base, but not a lot. Um, is that really still an option for you considering LeMahieu's absence? How comfortable are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable over there. I think from that angle on that side of the field, it's a little different. Um, and it just takes like reps. You know, you can just stand there during batting practice and get a lot of just visual reps of balls coming in from a different angle. Um, I've been there. Uh, let's see, I was there for, for one inter-squad game. I'll be there again today. Um, and I was honestly surprised with how comfortable I felt over there. Uh, I think nowadays with modern shifting and, and infield play, I think you kind of got to see yourself as a defender in the infield. If you see yourself as a, a third baseman or as a shortstop, you're kind of keyholing yourself into one spot. I mean, as a shortstop, you're playing really all over the diamond on both sides of the bag. As a third baseman, you're playing the entire left side. Um, and I think, you know, coming from Tampa where they like to move guys around a lot um, and play matchups as much as possible, um, I got a lot of work at different positions, um, maybe not game reps, but uh, it's certainly not a place that I'm uncomfortable. You're welcome. Take a next question from Max Goodman at Sports Illustrated. Max, go ahead. Hey, Matt. Thanks for thanks for taking the time today. You mentioned Tampa, and you were there since 2016 up until uh, you went to Texas. What is it that you can bring, being that you were in that system for for so long, and now you're you're with you know, a, a division rival who's competing with Tampa for a division title. And have, have the other guys in, in the Yankees clubhouse asked you at all about your time in Tampa and, and what they can learn to, to get better here? Uh, yeah, some of the coaches have, have talked to me about different things that they do over there. I think probably the best thing they do there is they don't, um, I guess silence voices is not the wrong, is not the right uh, term, but kind of in a way, all ideas are 
potentially valid ideas, even if it turns out to be something that's nothing. Maybe there's a little piece of a, of a dumb idea that turns out to be something positive. I think that's, that's something that they do really well over there is they're just open to outrageous stuff. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work, but a lot of times it does, and it turns out to be revolutionary. I think just kind of out of the box thinking is something that, that I've seen a lot over the last few years and um, not being afraid to raise your hand and, and maybe say something that you otherwise might or you might think is a little silly. Um, but I think it doesn't hurt to have kind of out of the box thinking, but certainly this organization is not, uh, is not hurting for success. <laughs>